Whether one agrees with a military arm or not, the fact is soldiers, sailors, airmen, guardians, and Marines make huge sacrifices for the United States of America. In the last 20 years, more veterans and active duty members have died from this one thing than have died on the battlefield or other combat-related incidents over the last 60 years. Please stay tuned for the rest of the story. This channel is for educational purposes and is dedicated to overall physical, mental, and spiritual wellness. None of the content is intended to diagnose or treat an illness or prescribe a medical protocol. If you are seeking straightforward, no-nonsense information about nutrition and exercise and an educated opinion outside the mainstream, then please stay tuned and consider subscribing. Thank you. Hey folks, Alan Davis here. During my 27 years of wearing the United States Air Force uniform, one thing I learned was we were a very well organized, trained, and equipped force to, putting it bluntly, kill people and break things. And when we were called to do so, we did our jobs, frankly, quite well. I was an Air Force pilot and flew over 110 combat missions during my service. But transitioning from the service to the civilian life was an entirely different matter altogether. The first year after I retired, frankly, was a struggle. And it varies in terms of degree, but every veteran I know suffers or has suffered from some, for, some form of PTSD, mainly because of maladjustment. Like I said, we were very well trained to do our jobs, but we were not, and things really haven't changed over the last 10 to 11 years, provided good preparation to fit back into a society that functions very differently from the military structure. Depression affects 10% of the U.S. adult population and approximately 20% of young adults and adolescents. Suicide has become the 11th leading cause of death in the United States, and military veterans are nearly 60% more likely to suffer from its effects than those who have not served. Over the last 20 years, 125,000 veterans and active duty service members have taken their own lives. That should come as a very staggering figure to you. Of course, the trauma of service has its challenges, but a recent study showed a more sinister culprit, deficient levels of vitamin D. The study aimed to determine the association between vitamin D supplementation, vitamin D blood serum levels, suicide attempts, and intentional self-harm in a group of veterans in the Department of Veterans Affairs. A retrospective cohort study looked at over 660,000 veterans who had filled either a vitamin D2 or D3 prescription between 2010 and 2018. And of those who had versus the control group, there was a 44% reduced risk of suicide and self-harm. Now, I have spoken at length on the benefits of vitamin D, and so I won't revisit those here. I'll leave it to you either to watch those videos or perhaps re-watch those videos. Suffice it to say, these ideations arose from depressive thoughts and other brain imbalances. And to think that some of that was attributable to a vitamin D deficiency, that is less than 20 nanograms per milliliter, is just dumbfounding for me. While vitamin D supplementation indeed was a strong indicator of reduced suicide ideation, personally, I believe there are some other issues at play. As I've shared in prior videos and numerous studies have shown, what we eat directly affects mental health. Now, in the military, the troops are very well fed. However, what they're given probably isn't always the best because, as you know, it is part of the government, and the government follows the USDA guidelines when it comes to, to nutrition, which, as we know, we've read, we've studied, these are probably not the best for physical health, much less for mental health. Now, here's what I'm thinking. I would suggest it would really be nice for the U.S. military to implement a ketogenic diet protocol for those suffering from mental illness. The research continues to show the benefits of such a diet, especially how therapeutic ketosis can help counter even severe forms of schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and depression. Our service men and women deserve this for the sacrifices they make. Now here's what I'm going to ask. I would like those of you who are watching and those of you who live in the United States 
to please write your congressman and inform him or her of this problem and suggest that a ketogenic protocol be employed not only for those suffering from, from mental illness, but also for the troops in general, because I'm convinced it will increase overall readiness and capability. Cite the studies. Share your own experiences. This matter is serious. And here's another favor I'd like to ask of you. If you recognize someone as either a veteran or active duty, reserve, or guard member, please thank that person. Not for his or her service, that's been overplayed, but rather for the sacrifice and the commitment given to this country to ensure we have the rights and freedoms that we do right now, at least for now. If you have friends who are veterans and are struggling, please send them to this channel. I will engage with each and every one of them. This kind of suffering requires empathy as well as close medical attention. Again, it is a very serious matter. Now, before you go, I'm going to invite you to share your comments, to share your questions, and to share your suggestions below. I really do enjoy the, the engagement and watching how the dialogues develop. And if you're so inclined, please like and share this video and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thanks again for watching, and I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Until next time, take care, be strong, and be balanced, and be blessed.